In this video, I want to just focus in on how you navigate around the Property Couch's Money Smarts platform. Pretty simple, really, so it's only going to be a short video, um, given that we've already had the onboarding setup video prior. But this is where you're going to land now once you uh, basically log in. So you're going to land on the Money Smarts dashboard. We've got personal information where you've got financial peace, nickname number one. Uh, nickname number two I've got here in this example, financial piece number two. Then obviously the goals, the big rocks in the jar in regards to what are the things that you want to prioritize because we've got a list of all of the biggest things that are going to require the most amount of money and to trap that surplus money that you need. Um, then we've obviously got the Money Smarts dashboard. Now we've had a little bit of a look around this in regards to the intro platform video, the, the onboarding stage. But I'm gonna spend a, a moment in just sort of talking you through where everything is. So you'll always see the annual money in, money out, and the targeted annual surplus once you've done your numbers. You'll also then see that broken down into the monthly, because remember it's a 12 month system, but we do average it out over the 12 months. We've got a couple of sundial or sunburst graphs here to tell you about where the income's coming, where the expenditure is in the different layers that we've got with the different jars, and then ultimately how you're progressing for your overall surplus rounds out our um, graphs. Then we've got the primary account, and you can see here that we can open those accounts up or we can close them down to the summary information and everything runs through our primary account, whether it's an offset or for those of you who are saving money, a primary saving account and you can see there we've got all of our jars broken down and then the overall surplus. We move down we've got our living and lifestyle and you can see here we've got the calculation for the monthly expenditure inside the living and lifestyle and then once that's done you're then going to have your weekly allocation. So for this particular couple they should be moving $472 or $71 across to their living and lifestyle bank account um, and then you can start to see what that includes. So there's a nice little breakdown in terms of because they've effectively categorized their money and you can see that coming in here in regards to what's, uh, what's what they're to spend their seven day float, their weekly allocation on in terms of living and lifestyle. Then you've got the credit card jar. Again, you can expand and contract that jar as we move down we can start to see you know, the direct payments jar, the loans jar, et cetera. And then the other important jar is the provisional jar. So learning about navigation, um, these are the accounts that we want to track. So it's very easy to then edit those accounts by clicking on the edit button. And you can obviously add by using the add button here if you wanna create a new expenditure that you wanna record for that particular month when you do your monthly checkup. So that's nice and easy in terms of how you would set those up. And then finally, we've got the monthly checkup. Um, and so I'll be spending more time in here in regards to how we set this up, uh, but it's really pretty straightforward. But again, you've got navigation. We always need to have a start date. We need to have an end date and we need to have a starting balance. And then we also need to have a starting balance on the credit card and we, we really want that credit card to start at zero. If we're trying to uh, firstly get rid of our credit card debt, um, we don't wanna wait until that credit card debt's paid off. We'll start with a higher credit card balance, but what we will do is, um, is that'll be our focus in terms of when we're trapping that surplus, that's the account that we want to, or the accounts or credit cards that we want to expel uh, and, and close down once we've, uh, once we've paid them off. And then we can go into the reporting. So we start to get, you know, we've always broken our money down into um, provisional money, which is the money that we do track. And then also we've got the uh, regular spending. So how we track that, um, which I will be explaining in the next video. So you can start to get a good understanding in terms of all of the reporting uh, that's done in regards to um, how well you're tracking. Now, that's the dashboard in regards to the overall position. But what makes that up, again, is the income coming in. And we're doing net of tax. So we don't want to do gross. We're doing net amounts in terms of what they look like. So 
Um, we would then be able to put the net amounts in here. So that's how we can work out our true cash flow um, outside of the taxes we have to pay. Then we've got the borrowings. So again, quite easy to understand how you can add our borrowings um, you know, in, in terms of a different loan that you might have, all the details that we're trying to trap there to help you understand that. And then finally, um, you've got the expenditure. Um, and that's really quite easily laid out in one master sheet uh, where we've got essential and discretionary, uh, the amounts, the frequencies. Now, best to put the frequency down in terms of how often they are paid, okay? Um, so, you know, anything, and that's a good giveaway in terms of what should be in your weekly allowance, your seven day float. If it's, a, if it's something that you're paying on a weekly basis um, or very regularly, even fortnightly for that matter, um, that should be in there. Um, all of your bills, um, in our view, should be in your um, uh, credit card account or a direct payment. So we do want all of that discretionary money outside of the ad hoc spending that you're doing um, to be separated out. So really clear there. Um, and if you obviously were to change the smarts category uh, from that point of view, that will automatically be calculated up in the dashboard and give you all the numbers. Now, for those of you who've got the book and tried to do this manually, you can understand why we built this because it just makes it so much easier. Um, just also a couple of other things down the bottom here. We've got some how-to videos uh, that will help you. And when you, if you're first here and you want a little bit more information, you can actually take the tour in terms of what each of the different areas means for you as well. But uh, I won't spoil that uh, that uh, journey. You can go in there and check that out yourself. So it's really simple. That's the navigation of the Money Smarts platform. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about how you use the system. So a little bit more of a deeper dive. Um, and we're also going to then look at how we do the monthly checkup. Uh, so you get a good understanding of what you need to be doing if you don't have the book. Um, and if you do have the book, you'll know what you're doing. But um, I'll also demonstrate that as well. Thanks for watching. Look forward to, uh, to seeing you on the other side of the next demonstration video. Cheers. Bye for now. Thank you.